Welcome back to Simply Nilofar. This is yet another very exciting day for me as I will be meeting my third Wonder Woman of this year. And that's none other than Aruna Varsani, the founder of charity organization Together for Better. It helps the needy in our country. Now, before I say more about her, you know what? Let's go meet her. Thank you, Aruna, for having us at the Purple Haze Apartments. I must say, it is beautiful. You're most Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much for being part of Simply Nilofar. Thank you for allowing me to be on your program. I really, really appreciate it. So tell me a little bit more about yourself. My name is Aruna Varsani. Uh, I am 43 years old now. Uh, I'm married with two children. Uh, I am Indian, Kenyan. I like to have my both country with me. Um, and. Uh, I am a Montessori trainer, so I run a school here in Kenya, okay. in Nairobi, which is based in Italy. Uh, it's called Montessori Plus Center. So where I manage the school and I also teach children if I get opportunity to teach. Wow, so you are training and teaching? Yes, wow. I am. You did it here or in India? I did it in Nairobi only, okay. but under American Institute. Oh, lovely. Yeah. And I know there is another very uh, interesting passion which you have besides teaching. <laughs> I, we are all well aware of it, which is hiking, right? Yes, I do a lot of uh, mountaineering. Uh -huh. um, so far, I have managed about uh, eight mountains. What? Which, <laughs> wow. Uh, which includes Everest also. My God, I to sit in the city in my I look for lifts in buildings. <laughs> that is truly inspiring. Well, well done, Aruna. That I must say, you. you're really an inspiration. When I see all those posts of yours about hiking, yeah. they really inspire me. One day, one day, I promise you, I'll come hiking with you. <laughs> I don't know when. I will take you with me. <laughs> Inshallah, for sure. Cool. So besides hiking and teaching, I know there is something really wonderful you do, which I've been seeing a lot about on social media, is the charity organization you run, Together for Better. Yeah. Now tell us more about it. How do you run it? What it is all about? When did you start? Um, it started very uh, natural way. Uh -huh. um, it started about four years ago. Okay. So I had a friend called Larissa Puzo. She's not here. She's a Brazilian. Okay. And she used to be my neighbor. So we say that in that period there was a dam, I think dam, dam incident in one of the area okay. where we got a call that we need some kind of food or clothes or something. And uh, since she's Brazilian and uh, the, la uh, the language sometimes or maybe because she's an international person, she can't do it in maybe Kenyan, she connected me with yeah. this charity organization first. Uh, and we said, okay, we're going to do it together. Uh, so we, that time, we only took about food items and clothes and we managed to at least help the people who need, whose houses were washed out in that water. Basically the dam was broken and the water oh, wow. came and it washed out the whole village. So this is how it started. And since then, we, we started getting all the calls that you, I know you guys are helping and this and that. So we then we thought about ourselves that we need to give some kind of name to it now. I yeah. can't say it's Aruna and it's Larissa. Okay. So we said, okay, the name search started overnight. The husbands were taking part, even to search for the name, everything, everything. We got a couple of names, but what we connect that together for better, why? Because she's Brazilian. Can you believe she's here in Nairobi? And I am being Indian, ended up being in also Kenya. So these two other countries are participating in Kenya means together for something better going to happen. Uh -huh. So this is how the name was born and uh, this is how it started. And after that journey or that start of time, there is no stop till today. Wow. So it keep going on and on and on and we keep expanding it. When I say expanding, any kind of help people ask, we try to help them. Mm. It can be a a uh, library, books, education fees, uniform, uh, hats, food, fees. So whoever comes to us, that's our new project. And then we start working on it. This is how the Together for Better started. And do you get like a lot of help from outside as well? 
through friends and family, mm -hmm. definitely yes. Mm -hmm. But past two helps, I got it from two big organizations also. Uh, I did some some fundraising and this is where I collected funds and started supporting the project because the project grew, the number grew of children, of people who needs more help. Mm -hmm. So this is how I did the fundraise. Otherwise, apart from that, friends and family do help. That is wonderful. Yeah, I'm sure it's, it's it's a task and a half, but you know what, you're doing a great job, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> and what do you think, like as a woman, as a mother, a wife, or doing so many things together, how important it is for a woman to be independent? Um, it's very important, and I see most of the women nowadays are very firm and very powerful, yeah. and I enjoy watching them. Mm -hmm. I love it. But when I say it's important, it's individual, it's to have you stand for yourself. Um, let's say I have my family life, mm -hmm. I have my day to day routine. Apart from that, what special I'm doing in my life? So I believe in my day has to be counted mm -hmm. in my life. So when I do this kind of charity work, or I'll just go and meet and spend some time with them, it's not always helping. You know, sometimes just be there for them. I feel my day is counted in my life. That is true. And it's important that every day which passes yes. has to hold some value. Yeah. It definitely gives you a lot of empowerment, right, as a human being. Yes. Empowerment and strength. Yeah. There's a lot of strength because today you are helping only five people, but tomorrow you are helping 500. Mm -hmm. So that, I will say, it's a strength which you build into it. Its power comes in you, which is naturally flows in and you can actually manage the number, whatever number comes to you. That's brilliant. So right now you are, you and your friend uh, Larissa, right? Yeah. You are two people who are running the organization or you have more people now? Um, I have, uh, yeah, my friend, she's still with me, but uh -huh. she's no longer here. Uh -huh. She had to move to another country, but she's still virtually with me. Uh, but right now I have another eight people who is joining me. Wow. I am happy to say because Together for Better is now official registered franchise. That's brilliant, I yeah. must say. Kehte na tin ke tin ke se sagar banta yeah. hai. So that's I believe really in that. Yeah, yeah. So. that is so, so. So I'm so happy. I have a powerful team behind me. Of course. And uh, yeah, this is how the journey started for Together for Better. Yeah. And so far, let me take you for a little bit in between journey. We have managed to distribute reusable pads wow. about 4,455 girls. So that's the number in a reusable pads. When I say reusable pads, it's made out of cloth. Okay. The layer of cloth. And it's simply naturally environmental friendly product. Plus, it's long lasting product. Sometimes I go all the way to Magadi, Kajiado, Samburu, all this area. We have girls are really suffering without pets. And when I say really suffering means they can't go to school. They've been married early age. It can be a pregnancy case. Or it can be they're using any other kind of product where they are more infected or they are, they're catching some kind of disease or they don't have anything. Uh, in one or two areas, I came to know that when the girl goes through her cycle, cycle, she's been sent out to the water stream area because there is nothing. So what she has to do, she has to dig the area and stay there for some time but to clean herself because she's next to water then, right? Then I slowly, slowly, you know when you go to the ground, you ask girls what are the challenges, what are the, what you need exactly. And I came to know also when girl who was going such a way to, to spend three to four days near a water stream, they have been taken or eaten, either taken by men or eaten by wild animals. So girls, girls was disappearing. So after that I came to know that something which, which I used to use it also as a material, I never had this, the, the modern kind of sanitary pads. So I said, if I I managed to use it, this girl can do something too. Plus, I was inspired by one of my friends who was already doing the pad. I said, okay, I'm going to do this because I am going on the ground anyway. Mm -hmm. I can't be idle and wasted my time there. I started taking pads for girls. Wow. Yeah. 
and you take the packs to them. Some girls don't know what is pack. Some girls need to know how to wear it. Some girls don't know what is reusable parts. So you have to empower everything in this child. But at a go, can you believe you have 30 girls in your classroom and you have to explain everything in the details, like you are mothering the, the, these, these children. Yeah, and when I say mothering, because at home, both parents are so busy to look for end of day a meal for a family. So they don't get that much time to interact with the family. So when you go, you can't only give a part, you have to give your 100% uh, information and knowledge what you have and me being mother definitely I have at least to nudge a, ch a child girl right so I pass it on that to girls and this is how the reusable pads came in and um, there is another little different area I went it's called Bamba mm -hmm. it's in Samburu okay I did it recently only I came to know the ladies were so precious that they were asking me to teach me how to stitch these pads. Uh, yeah. The reason being, when they have the cycle time, either they use a mattress, they cut the mattress part, they use it, or they remove their favorite t-shirt because they might have only few and those few are definitely their favorite. They end up using those t-shirts or sometimes they cut cow skin a cow skin, really? dry it, make a shape of a nappy. In the middle area, they put a wet sand and wear it. Wow. Can you believe the hard time, the hardship these mothers are going themselves so they don't want to see their children into this kind of journey? Of course. So they keep asking that, can you teach us? And this is how I also started teaching them how to stitch the pads if you don't have um, a normal pad. So even if, let's say they have a kikoi, mm -hmm. they can really at least make out of that some basic pads. Okay. If you don't have anything, then it's better to have something like this. Wow. So is it very challenging, like, you know, because these are people you don't know them, right? They're totally strangers. Yeah. So is it very challenging to connect with them, to explain them? especially they are growing girls, you know, it's, it's not easy, right, to just suddenly meet someone and then empower, and empower them about these new things in their life. So how yeah. do you handle those challenges? It can be challenging, mm -hmm. but I am lucky to say I have a small platform um, where Armour of Health of Africa has given me. Wow. So I'm uh, connected with them and whenever they go for their uh, workshop or um, fistula camp, they do normally FGM and fistula camp in mm. those areas. Okay. I take along myself with them. While they are working on these two different uh, subjects individually, I start working on the on other side with the girls who really need help because if you fix the problem from the younger age, mm -hmm. you are fixing a lot of more people into this circle. You get me? So that's why I, I, it's not a challenging but it can be a challenging also because I go to most of the time Maasai area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I get to know all the Maasai tribe. Mm -hmm. But when I say Maasai tribe, there are different Maasai tribes too. Their culture is different, but it's not much different than our Indian culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they they have similar almost culture what we have. Really. Yeah. Okay. But when they see me with the that I am not Kenyan. Definitely there is that small gap which I need to make sure yeah. I first fill it in or approach them that I'm one of you. Wow. I'm not different. Well, a little bit interaction with Maasai's I've had over my holidays or whatever. They seem across, so they come across a very humble people. Yes. Yeah, they're like, I can, I think it's easy to, even if it's challenging, I think yeah. somewhere they are very, you know, like, I don't know how to put it in the right word. They kind of understand you better, yeah. maybe because I don't know, they lack that thing around them or they, I don't know, what is it with them? Because, no. you know, even when you see them in Mubasa or Mara or anywhere, they kind of, they're very happy people, right? Even yeah. if they're going through so much. Yeah. They actually have very strong culture. Yeah. And very uh, royal culture, I'll put it that way. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when you go there. Yeah. They are quite welcoming, but first you have to earn their trust. Ah. Yeah, once you earn their trust, 
then you belong to that place totally. Then they are open to share up their little challenge if they have or little happiness what's happening around them. Mm -hmm. Each time I go, I do get one of the jewelry. Oh, nice! Yeah, so I now have a full set of I can uh, imagine. Uh, Maasai jewelry. Because they, they, each time they do give me the We want to see Aruna in that whole... Uh, no, we have to see for sure. I'm sure you look beautiful with that. Yeah, and each jewelry has a different meaning. Oh, wow. So you learn different drivers, different uh, type of jewelry, and then with, along that they have a different meaning. Ah. Yeah, and with the, that also comes with different colors of jewelry. So these are all details which you need to learn. You need I've to heard for the first the, time. <laughs> how they live in, and they are quite warm people. Yeah. Very warm, they very welcome. Yeah. Very welcome. So tell me more about your future projects or future goals and what are you working on currently right now? Um, currently, I'm working on some of the library project, mm -hmm. uh, which has a unique name also, I must say. It's called Smallest Library in Africa. Oh. Um, it was born in uh, Babadogo slum area. Uh, started by Peter. His name is Peter. Um, he started this project. And when I, when I went there to support girls with the reusable pads, I realized that I need to bring some books into that small library. So this is how the library project I started. So, so far I've managed that project in different library or different school or different community. Uh, in total of 18 libraries are up and running. Wow. So I must say it's good that we started that time this project because right now, right now in Corona time, can you believe children can't go to school? Yeah. Uh, they can't have any access to the social media or, or I will say Wi-Fi or internet. These libraries are really helping those children into the, especially into the community area. Okay. So this is what one of the projects I've done. And the future goal is I want to grow bigger in this field. When I say I want to means we need to grow. I can't do it alone. So I need more people's help here and more volunteers. I like to have more children from the school especially because those children understand and value the education. Yes, when something is taken away, like let's say right now you're taken away from the school, True. they are now valuing the school how important it was when they were in a school. They were in school, yeah. Yes. So I need more help definitely. I can't do it alone. And I need to go until I can go, until I can reach more people okay. and help and also touch those beautiful heart out there yeah, of course. who are innocent, I must say. Do you take like donation for books as well? Like if somebody wants to donate books to the library? Yes, I receive books donation or money in a kind because mm -hmm. sometimes I need a school books, ah. which not everybody has it. Right. Or sometimes there is a British curriculum books and when I am reaching out more to the Kenyan community or Kenyan curriculum children who is using it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes definitely I do need money in a kind mm -hmm. but any books are welcome for children, for high schooler, for university student because those books are used very wisely, very productively and it's like a reference book. It's not must, it's a syllabus book, yeah. but as a reference book, we definitely use it. Wow, that's brilliant. So yes, book donations more than welcome and volunteers as well. And um, now, of course, we are going through these tough times, COVID-19 and coronavirus and whatnot. How are you managing? Like, how do you interact with your people and your team or the people you are helping? Uh, I do have a key person always in a different, different sectors area where I have done the project. Uh -huh. So through phone calls, I am in constantly on touch. Uh, if they need something, I definitely do send them sanitary pads right now because that's something they that need. But since the productivity of uh, uh, pads have stopped, uh, I can't send those ones reusable, but I send normal pads. Okay. At least until this period finished, then I can always go back to the production, yeah. reusable uh, pads production. Wow. Yeah? Wow. And some of the areas I must say I don't need to touch right now because look the libraries are set up already there. They are working by themselves. It's already functional out there. Children mm -hmm. are benefiting from the library. They are not bored. They are not on the street. 
The second thing is the pads which we have given. So 4,445 girls are sorted already. Wow. Because once I give a kit, it has a six pack and the girl is sorted for one and a half year. So they are fine. Yeah, you've planned it well, huh? Yeah, it just happened. Yeah. I didn't plan it because I never knew the, the coronavirus is coming, you see. And top of that, now the, the first need is the food. So again, I reach out to the key people who I have on the ground mm -hmm. and whatever the requirement, they are the one who are helping me to distribute the food in that specific area. Wow, that is definitely yeah. very inspiring. How do you think, Aruna, you empower other women? What do you think, how are you empowering other women? Um, I, I'll say they, they already have a power mm -hmm. in it. You just need to treasure that power and go out and do something special which you like to do it, yeah? Like helping someone, it's my passion about it. Mm. Hiking is mine. You need to treasure in you, like look around your, your community, what you got. You will able to find, I'm sure, something which you like to do it, or I will say, come to me, I will help you to look for those treasures, right? I will like to, everybody to at least identify what special you can do. So you live for, yourself and for others absolutely right this is how i count my life in a daytime like every day should be counted in my life that is so so good so what is that message you'd like to convey to all the women watching this episode or anybody watching this episode um, i like to send out special message that you all have a special strength in you power in you you must treasure it and Go out there and help other people or explore your power. You will never know what uniqueness you are carrying with you. At the same time, I like to also help to come to me or join my page on Facebook Together for Better, where you can become a community for Together for Better and then start doing something you might like it. Because remember, Together for Better has different various projects. Yes. We do knitting for the cancer patients. So we make the shawl and knitting the, the, what you call the bunnies and all this. There is a group of ladies that are doing already. Mm -hmm. We do also books and the libraries up. We do also a counseling in the area where we need. We also do reusable pads, which most of the ladies can do it at home. You don't need to go to the a specialist and learn how to stitch this. If you have little technique in you, how to do little stitching can definitely make those pads. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, what is the way? Um, they can reach out for me on my Instagram page and a Facebook page, which is called Together for Better. Or I can give you my telephone number, which is 0722-746-333. Okay, that's brilliant. So now, Aruna, we've talked about your charity, your hiking and everything. Uh, we're going to go straight to the rapid fire. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. It has to be quick, okay? Okay. So, what do you do first thing in the morning when you wake up? I pray. You pray? Yes. Wow, that's amazing. And what are you thinking right now? Coronavirus. <laughs> I think everybody is just thinking that only. And when did you start doing these charity drives? Four years ago. Four years ago. Lovely. And what's your hidden talent? Not hiking and no teaching. Anything else? <laughs> uh, I do cooking. Ah. And painting. Okay. Uh, and that's, those are two of my hidden talents. <laughs> Interesting. And what can't you live without? Work. Okay. And what is the first thing you notice about a person? About? A person? A smile. Smile. Okay. And if his teeth are good, then... It will be okay. It will be okay. And what's your favorite food? I love cake. Cakes. What time? <laughs> Uh, any cake uh. with the butter I see, I can eat a kilo. <laughs> <laughs> but you climb, so you lose all those calories, yeah? Like to change about today's generation? Uh, I will say I don't like to change anything in this generation. Okay. <laughs> because they are still doing uh, all the social work, all the communication, all the uh, support they need out, need to send out there. They are already into it. What I will say is, they are in a different generation. 
So the way of they are uh, uh, giving out service is different. So I must say I'm so proud of them what they're doing, and uh, it's just we need to understand them differently. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's brilliant. That somebody doesn't want to change anything for a change. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Aruna, for having us today. And uh, thank you. I must say, I am really empowered. I'm sure many other watching out there are empowered as well. Um, as me, as Nilofar Khan, I would love to be part of your charity organization. You're most welcome. I'm not going to talk big. I think actions uh, speak louder than words. Yes. So please count me in. And in whichever way, whatever way we can come in handy, I can reach out with you to other people. Please, please, please do remember me. Thank you and so much. And this is something small from Team Simply Nulufar for Together for Better. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank supporting you. us. As we all know, we are going through tough crisis these days and any little difference we make in the society will be very, very helpful. If you feel generous, if you feel you can volunteer, please reach out to Aruna on Instagram, Together for Better on Facebook as well, whether it's donation of books, whether it's money, in any, any kind, that would be just wonderful. A little change will definitely come out in a very big, big way. Uh, for details, you can follow these numbers as well and you can get in touch with everyone. Thank you so much for being on Simply Nilofar. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to mention this, that as team Simply Nilofar, we are trying to um, get in touch with all the wonder women in our society. Women who have made a huge, huge change, have brought a big change amongst us. So if you would like to be part of Simply Nilofar, do approach us. You can inbox or you can get in touch with us on my number 0724-276-786. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being part of this journey. If you liked watching this episode, please do like, share and subscribe to Simply Nulupar. A big, big thank you from Team Simply Nulupar.